welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten's VHS Tales. Before we get started, what are we drinking? I am drinking Dragon of the Black Pool Black Lager. All right, and I'm drinking another one of yours. Wise Kraken Bud. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> Today we're going to bring to you something that goes far back, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now, this is another <laughs> movie that you got me into because I never seen it before. And I remember coming over and you were watching it, and it was like one of those things like, oh, what is this? And it was fucking long. Yeah, it's super long. For the longest time, I couldn't remember the name of the movie. <laughs> and I remember renting a couple of westerns off the, the movie shelf, guessing. <laughs> yeah. I hope this is the one that we watched that Justin said. And it wasn't at all. It was awful. It's all these <laughs> shitty westerns until finally... I remembered the name of the movie. Ah, good and the bad and the other. <laughs> but it took me a few tries before I could remember it. Yeah, this was one that my mom always put on. Yeah. And we always used to play it. A game we would play where a lot of injuries would occur. <laughs> Um, like deadline, I guess. Like what happens when you try to like, yeah, exactly, reenact hangings. <laughs> But we'd never actually attach the rope to anything. We'd just have it around, like... Well, didn't we hang... For some reason, we chose to hang by the loops in our belts. Yeah. The loops some... in... The, the belt loops in the pants we'd attach to the... <laughs> we'd take the, the swing, like, the seat off the swing set and attach that to our, uh, the belt hoops and hang like that for yeah, some and... reason. In the span of one weekend, we both got black eyes. <laughs> Yeah, from smacking our faces. Because the, both of ours, while well, the weight couldn't handle it, and the, the belt loop snapped, and I remember I hit that, that, that wooden bench thing my grandpa made with <laughs> my face. I can't remember how I got the black eye. But I remember going over the next day or whatever, and you had one too. <laughs> yeah, and then our moms... We couldn't hang out for like a while, for like yep. a couple of weeks or whatever yep. it was. We were all in trouble. Playing the, the movie and reenacting the end scene. Hey, blonde! I got Adam to stand. I'm pretty sure it was that speaker. I thought it was an ottoman no, for some reason. No, we never had an ottoman okay. in the basement. It was that, that those speakers that yep. your mom gave us. And that... I got Adam to stand on the on the very edge because he kept saying it needs to be the edge like like in Tuco and the yeah, when he's on, on that, that cross. right on the edge with and, his feet and I was standing I was like no no you got to be at the edge like at the <laughs> edge of the thing so I'm like Keep you got to struggle like, yeah. fucking ass over Tika the whole thing flipped over because it's on the edge right all my weight was on one side <laughs> that's right yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and you got all mad and all everything. Hurt and everything. <laughs> we have a good friend of ours, Chad Canuddy, who also <laughs> follows the, the, the show, and we've known him since junior high, and he's also a huge fan of this movie, and still living at home at the time, and we're teens or whatever, and get this ring at the doorbell. It's like super late at night, like one in the morning or something, and I open the door, and it's Chad. Oh, drunk! <laughs> and he's dressed like, I guess he has bought this Clint Eastwood outfit. And he's like, I'm Clint Eastwood. I'm like, what? What the hell are you, what are you talking, talking about? about? You're Clint Eastwood dressed like the the good from the Good and Bad. Now, I couldn't put it together at first. I'm like, what do you mean you're Clint Eastwood? I'm like, <laughs> it's all drunk. <laughs> and then he just went home. Didn't come in or visit her. <laughs> <You just walk. laughs> but the movie is fantastic from yeah. start to finish it's like just this cerebral yeah you know it's just an explosion of the senses yeah. almost like fuck like whenever i put this movie on i crank the volume to the max oh that soundtrack the score oh. by inyo Mor morricone, morricone is fucking just breathtaking just incredible yeah. and like just from the opening uh, credits. Yeah. You know you're in for yeah. a fucking ride. So you look at the movie cover and it's always Clint Eastwood, right? Yeah. But I really think it's Eli Wallach's movie. Oh, he's, big time. he's the kind of shining star in this movie, I think. He's the yeah. one who takes the ball and runs with it. Yeah, we were talking about this a few weeks back then. Yeah, yeah. Where we thought it was weird where how Clint Eastwood gets the main billing well, Clint Eastwood and uh, Lee Van Cleef, they get like the top billing, 
and in the in the opening credits, Eli Wallach is mentioned as like a footnote. Yeah. A and also yeah. Eli Wallach. But like he's at the like, bottom. He's the fucking He's like the main character. He's the pivotal point of the whole movie. Everything revolves around him. <laughs> exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. He he's got like the the second part of the puzzle. Yeah. And he steals the show. And he steals yeah, he steals the show. Extended versions. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. Sometimes they're ugly. <laughs> um it really pisses me off that I bought this on Blu-ray recently. Well, not recently, years ago I bought it on Blu-ray. And there's no option to watch it besides the extended cut. Right. Which is kind of bastardized because the way they shot the movie, they didn't shoot sound on stage, right? Yeah. And the cut, the extended cut is the Spanish version, I think. Mm -hmm. So Eli Wallach and Clint Eastwood, those guys didn't bother doing the voiceovers for those scenes yes. because they weren't using the U.S. cut. So they came back and did them nowadays yeah. <laughs> for the Blu-ray release, and it's blatant. It's like, first of all, I thought Eli Wallach sounds like he's 100 years old. Which he was pretty close yeah. anyways. And the Clint Eastwood, I'm like, who... It doesn't is, sound... Is there some guy doing, like, a bad Clint Eastwood impression? Like, they get some impersonator, and they look at the... Oh, it's him! Yeah. It's Clint Eastwood doing a Clint Eastwood impression. It's like, oh, yeah, man. Yeah, it's really bad. And it's like, even the sound, though, the sound itself doesn't sound the same. It doesn't match. Yeah, it doesn't match the rest of, yeah. the, of the movie. It sticks out like a sore thumb, those scenes. They don't... They were cut for a reason, right? Exactly. You don't need them in the movie. They were cut. The movie's long enough as it is. The movie has... So many iconic scenes, and of course, there's the standoff. Yeah, there's the standoff, but before that, there's the whole graveyard scene where yeah. two goes running through yeah. the ecstasy of gold, right? Yeah. And it's like you got two back to back iconic scenes. scenes. Yeah. It's like the blueprint for a lot of Western movies oh, that follow, yeah. right? Yeah. A lot of Quentin Tarantino movies. Oh, for they, sure. Of yeah. course, they borrow yeah. from. All of uh, Sergio Leone and oh, yeah. Ennio Morricone's music and everything, yeah. right? And it's like this movie is so iconic. Even nowadays, you know, we talk about the iconic scenes, the standoff. Like, it was last year at Chad's place yeah. out in the country where Chad hauled out his speaker system. <laughs> yeah. He just bought the vinyl for the soundtrack and put right. on Trio. Yeah, put on Trio, you know, for the. The, yeah. Draw the stand up. <laughs> and the three of us stood there for the whole time looking at it and we reenacted that whole scene. <laughs> I all got hurt too because I was the I was the bad and I fell yeah. back and I got all hurt and in that the, the wet grass it was all like morning almost yeah, and yeah. drinking all night. <laughs> Yeah, but that's how <laughs> that's how rooted this yeah. movie is with us, right? I mean, the way it's shot, right? You see the eyes, yeah, and like the music, ding, 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 and like you see the the, the bad yeah. fingers yeah. are moving. Talk about a lead up. Talk oh. about suspense, right? Probably the best ever. Yeah. Justin, he likes to go uh, shopping at thrift stores and buying. <laughs> Cheesy records, oh, yeah. cheesy, <laughs> cheesy vinyl, you know, cheesy LPs. Uh, you always give to myself in the chat mm. for jokes, mm. right? So he gives to me this <laughs> good, the bad, and the ugly soundtrack, I'm and like, that was real. Like yeah. I was like, oh, yo, yo. oh, this is cool, right? So I put it on one day finally, and it's like, what is this? It's some weird <laughs> elevator Muzak version <laughs> of the soundtrack, and it's like, it's three pieces. It's like some shitty guitar and like an organ. And some jazz drummer. What, the like, hell? what is this? It's all tacky. And it was laughable though. It was, I was laughing my ass off. But once I realized how bad it was, it's like, oh man, this is how this elevator music. Some kind of cosmopolitan yeah, it's like thing. Some lounge act. Don't you know I love you so? Doing the good and the bad and the ugly soundtrack. So that's the story that we have for um, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. One of the greatest westerns ever made. One of the greatest movies ever made. Yes. With one of the greatest soundtracks ever made. You got it. <laughs> and uh, that's just our little story about how that harks back to when we were kids. and Still till today. You still know? to this day. Yep. I still put it on. And I still blast those songs. Yeah. Like, I turn that fucking... I turn the stereo up as loud as it can go. Yeah. So until next time, 
keep drinking and hunting for gold. <laughs>